Uh, very interesting. But let's lastly here the last segment of the day uh, for a few minutes. We talked about it a little bit off the stretch. Let's talk about some trade targets. What more could the Bills do to up this roster? Let's say they get a win and they're competitive with the rest of the AFC. You're talking Ravens, Texans, Chiefs, Bills, Steelers five. I mean, I mean, six, maybe even the Bengals right now, even though they started so slow. And then the seventh could go to anyone, could go to one of those AFC East teams, could go to the Colts or Broncos, who really cares who gets that seventh seed. Uh, but for the most part, it's the four division winners at the top with the Steelers kind of there, maybe sitting in the five seed. Going to give the four seed a little bit of run, whether it's the Bills again in the playoffs at home or possibly the Texans in the four seed. Um, but it's going to look something like that, uh, a tough four or five game uh, against the Steelers in the first round of the wild card. But Kevin, what do the Bills need to do? Give me a position first, in your opinion. We don't have to have exact names. I'll, we'll pick names from there. If you could upgrade one more position on the Bills roster, which position is it? I think they could do a multitude of things here. I think they could add to the wide receiver room. I think they could add an offensive lineman, specifically a tackle with Grable potentially being out for the year. You could always add an edge rusher, but I think it'll help once Vaughn comes back after this week. And I like that they have Javon Solomon, Juwan Smoot's playing really well. So I think they have some pieces there. I keep coming back to the safety position, though, because I'm still mm -hmm. not satisfied. I think DeMar is solid, but I don't know if he's going to be the one to take us over the top in the playoffs. I'm still waiting to see on Cole Bishop. I think the Bills are kind of slow playing it. He's not ready because, you know, we saw during the Texans game, you could see that he's not ready. So DeMar is a placeholder, right? I think Taylor Rapp is established as safety one. And right now it's tomorrow until Bishop is ready. But would you want to pull the Band-Aid off on that and go get a different placeholder until Bishop is ready? And by that, I mean you go out and acquire someone at the deadline to take over for DeMar. You demote DeMar, and then you get to the end of the year and say, okay, you played really well. We're going to give you another contract. Or, you know what, thanks for everything, but now Cole Bishop's ready for his sophomore season. So I feel like safety is the one position that they could potentially upgrade here as the deadline is two weeks away. Yeah. Like, like safety is tough for me because I really think they could replace tomorrow and obviously the talent on the field and maybe they will end up doing it, but it's super tough because I think that they're going to run a roll tomorrow. And then just like we just talked about a defensive end with you would it off Solomon and Yvonne coming back. Give us like a similar scenario where if they wanted to make a move at safety, they could go Edwards. Like he is the vet in the room already. He'd be, he'd be like a candidate you could possibly trade for. Yeah, uh, if he was on another roster, and then you have the young player too in Cole Bishop. Uh, so you could go either away, and they have uh, not not wanted to go either. So that's why I always go back to if there's a top end safety that can be had with them eating the salary and not that big of a pick, a fourth round pick going back, of course. Um, but that could probably happen at literally any position on the roster, beside like maybe running back or a couple others, like tight end. Um, other than that, like they could certainly make a move at safety or any other position, but. I'm struggling with if they wanted to replace DeMar, the two in-house candidates are ready. They don't want to do it with them. I, it's struggling that they would want to put one of McDermott's favorite position from an outsourced candidate. It's 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 tough for me to think that they'll go say. I, I agree, though. Safety would be where I would pick. I just don't think the Bills will pick safety. So that's kind of how I think that in, in in a vacuum, safety is the room I would I would replace for sure. Like, no doubt about it. Um, and, and this I, is the Bills this disagree. Is a good question. Because, like, I, I don't have an answer. The closest thing that I can come up with is those injuries in the offseason and in the summer set him back to the point where he was not able to get up to speed to DeMar Hamlin's level. Now, some right. people might say, well, how hard is it to get to Hamlin's level? Because you would like to think that Edwards has the smarts and the athletics to get back to that level and then some, right? Because the bar isn't that high. This isn't like a Justin Simmons. By the way, is he still a free agent? No, he's in Atlanta. Oh, that's right. Okay. Not that I was going to think about going for Justin Simmons, but it just popped into my mind. I saw people were talking about Micah Hyde today, too. I don't think that's going to be the move. Like, if they were going to do something like that, I feel like they already would have, right? Like, Micah probably would have came back already, or maybe they would have gone after Justin Simmons. Or in terms of Mike Edwards, if they really wanted to shake up from DeMar, then they probably would have had Edwards in already. So that's why I could see this both ways where it's like maybe they just flat out don't do anything and you still have Edwards sitting there on the bench if you need something. But I'm trying to look at teams who are going to be in sell mode because, sure, you might be able to pluck a player off of a winning team if it's just a bad situation. But in terms of Mike Edwards, you could also include him because if it's just not working and he's not grasping the playbook, 
maybe it's better to just say, let's do a player for player trade like we saw today with Ernest Jones and Jerome Baker. Maybe you throw a draft pick in there. And I'm looking at the Cleveland Browns. What do you think about acquiring Grant Delpit or Rodney McLeod and then including Edwards in on that and potentially a draft pick? Would you be interested in either of those guys? Because, I mean, they could potentially be on the block. Yeah, what's funny about Cleveland is like I always say this, like there Cleveland has a bunch of players, like seriously, that I would pick. But at some point, like, is Cleveland gonna continue to trade with us as like a farm team? Like it's tough for me to think that they'll continue to go back to the well to to make trades like that. It's 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 tougher for me to to assume that like, oh, let's just go to Cleveland to see what happens. Like from that, like I like Grant Delpit. So Grant Delpit could make sense. Like the safety one is hard because I don't know who the bills would deem to be better than DeMar for this defense. So it's tough for me to actually pick a exact player on the bills roster or on another roster to replace DeMar when there's two on the roster now that they don't think is going to be replacing to the bills roster. The problem with Delpit was that, you know, he's already under a contract three for 36. They just signed him to that after his rookie deal it's a fairly decent deal three for 36, but the bills are in position to like make them eat some of it. I just don't, I don't think they're going to eat all that money for like a grand Dal pit. Like it's different with Cooper. Like he's a younger player. He probably doesn't match the mold of somebody that Cleveland would trade. So I think you can rule him out in terms of that. Did you say Rodney McLeod next? Yeah. Cause he's not a cheap one year deal, right? Yeah. He'd be a guy that they could go after, but he's also one that I'd, I think wouldn't be that much wouldn't be a different upgrade to to Demar. I mean, that's kind of just Mike Edwards, right? Like that right. that's essentially a toss up where if Edwards and and here's where it comes down to like us not being able to know what's going on behind closed doors because if Edwards is just so much of a headache where they can't relate to each other, right? Like not that he's uncoachable, but if he just doesn't fit the system, then that's the case where you would just do a player for player swap and say, "Okay, we're going to give you to a new team, new situation. We're going to get someone of your caliber to literally just come in and swap in as that fourth safety. So maybe in that case, he wouldn't be, you know, supplanting DeMar Hamlin, but he would just literally take over for Edwards as that backup safety who might be getting scratched, might get a roster spot, but maybe he's not going to be getting that much, that many of the snaps. Yeah. And then you're just making moves to make moves. I mean, they have Ronnie Hickman who they like a nice looking young safety from Ohio state last year. Um, so they could definitely move one of these safeties. I just think Hickman and Delpit are probably the way they're going to go. I just, I just don't think McLeod offers anything over Mike Edwards. It doesn't make too much sense. If you stay on this roster, just real quick, you have Zadarius Smith, a guy I tweeted, not going to cost you any money. He's a good pass rusher. Um, he's been successful pass rushing reminds me of like a Leonard Floyd. Um, he's been pretty good this season. You know, he's always going to get you around that same Leonard Floyd level of sacks. Um, a guy that wouldn't cost you too much money. He makes a lot of sense because you can plug and play him right at the, at the defensive end. And it would probably just cost you Casey two Hill in terms of like who you're cutting. So I just think that ultimately you could still keep Solomon in his role. Um, but for him to come in, you know, that's, that's definitely going to be somebody that I immediately point to. Could they upgrade defensive tackle? I think we talked about Carter enough on the show. Austin Johnson does his thing as the third, fourth defensive tackle. They like their starters. Sure. I think that those could get a little bit more production out of DT. I just don't see them going out and it being the position group, but I could always see them adding a pass rusher to come in and rush the passer like Leonard Floyd style. So it just always makes sense that whether we think it's the number one need or not, it is one that what's the number one thing you need to do is get Joe Burrow to the ground in the wild card round uh, or Mahomes and, and, and Lamar in the, in the divisional or conference championships. So, you know, seeing Joe Burrow in the first round, which is a thing for somebody, either Houston, Buffalo or Baltimore, Maybe even hmm. the Chiefs. Somebody's going to have to see Joe Burrow in the wild card round because I think he's going to get the six or seven spot. So it's not going to be fun. It's going to be different than when you're seeing these Mason Rudolphs or Skylar Thompsons or Mac Jones in these six, seven games. You're going to get a legitimate team that, yes, they have issues on defense. Like this, the Cincinnati defense stinks. It's not the same one that we've seen in the past. However, that offense is just as good as it's always been for the most part. It's, you know, Joe Burrow's playing good football. It's definitely not one you're excited about playing in the wild card round. You know, it's not the same Lou Anarumo for sure, um, which is what has let, what won them playoff games historically, not Joe Burrow. Um, but Joe Burrow in the wild card round is not going to be fun. I think the Bills could want to deploy, uh, make sure they have as many pass rushers, assuming you don't know who's going to be healthy. 
you know you're getting Milano back. You know Bernard's hopefully healthy. Dorian's there. You have already Nicholas Morrow, who you use. You have Spectre, who you like. You have two younger guys in Olfoscio and Joe Andreessen. They're not going to do anything at linebacker. Like they just with Milano kind of being that acquisition in December. As much as linebacker could be in play, they've already upgraded that room to feel comfortable, hopefully January 1st. So I can't see linebacker. I can't see DT. Corner doesn't need anybody. Safety is going to be tough for me to assume that's going to be the room, but it does make the most sense to replace DeMar. Will the Bills actually do it? Maybe they will. Maybe they'll feel like there's an external guy out there who can be the upgrade difference between the three safeties right now with DeMar. Cole Bishop and Mike Edwards. So sure, there's still a conceivable chance. I just think pass rusher is the most seamless um, addition to stopping Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, uh, uh, CJ Stroud, come come playoffs, and Mahomes. Someone mentioned uh, Andre Cisco early in the show. Do you think he could be a potential target? And then I'm looking at some different depth charts here. And I feel like I've heard this name floated around at least maybe over the summer and going into the season, Nick Scott with the with the Panthers. Do you think that could be an option? Yeah, I mean, I like Cisco. He's been a guy that was really good last year during their winning stretch that Jacksonville had. Um, he's definitely, you know, he's going to be a free agent. I don't think that Jacksonville has any interest in, in in having him on their roster. He hasn't played great football this year. He was really good last year. I think he was a top 30 safety last year based on a few metrics. Once again, though, he doesn't jump out to be somebody that would replace Mike Edwards and DeMar Hamlin. He is probably a tick better than both, but he's not that much better. He's a rental like I just would probably need a top 25 safety for the bill for me to feel like the bills will actually move from not only DeMar Hamlin, but to feel the need to get rid of Edwards and then still not want to play Cole Bishop. So I think it needs to be a top. He's fringe. Um, and then, and then Nick Scott, just, he's, he's my guy. He's just not good enough. So I, I, I wouldn't mind rostering him. Um, uh, but he's, he's not a guy that would put a dent in that for current four man rotation that they, that they operate with. Once again, he'd be similar to that McLeod being a guy that could come in if you had safety injuries for sure, but he's not going to be a guy that's going, that I would see that the Bills would replace uh, one of those jerseys on game day with. I just I don't necessarily think that that's that's the way they would go because otherwise they already said that uh, Mike Edwards missed too much time, so now they're going to bring in a guy like Nick Scott to play and then try to claim Edwards missed too much time, but now you're bringing in a guy off the off the street that you're claiming he's going to know the defense better. Like that's realistically why to me, and Nick Scott's not playing very good this year in general either. But um, that's why to me, like the laps about uh, Micah Hyde make a little bit of sense because he could come in and know the defense right away and he knows what to do, knows how to handle it. Like, is uh, like, so that's, that's a little different of a scenario because um, he knows what to do in every situ- situation limited or not. So that's like what like is a little bit interesting but it, like, I think they're now at the stage if they were going to go Micah Hyde. Um, what are you waiting for November? Why not October? Like, what what November first is is Micah Hyde the reason? You don't have an injury there. I, I just don't know. They would have already gone Micah Hyde if that's the way that they were going to go. At least someone on the practice squad. Even uh, I just it doesn't make any sense for Micah Hyde to just be like November the be the November first guy without an injury. They would have already gone Micah Hyde if they thought he was better than Demar. Cole or Mike Edwards, and they they clearly don't, uh, and they don't have an injury there, so I couldn't I can't see Mike High being the answer. Safety needs to be a top twenty five guy, otherwise they're just going to hang on to the three that they have right now competing for that one spot. I just I just don't see safety being the position um, unless it's going to be a guy like you mentioned to be the fourth safety. Uh, I, I mean that's just nickel diming your roster. So if they want to do that, they could, but we're talking about actually improving the roster, and for me to do that isn't nickel diming. It's going after Buda Baker. Um, they would need to eat some salary. I don't think that they will, uh, but he would have to be like a top 25 guy. Otherwise, I don't think safety's a move. Pass rusher's the more seamless move, and they can always integrate a receiver into this offense, especially with what's going on with Curtis Samuel. You've already let MBS go. They could always look at one of these these receivers that seem to be plentiful for the first time ever. You got Cooper Cup. You got, you got Hopkins to go into KC. You got Cooper Cup available. You have Christian Kirk. I mean, you just have names of players that you generally like, been a pretty active October, realistically. Yeah. So uh, more like an NBA or NHL um, than the NFL. Rap and DeMar have almost similar PFF grades, legit middle of the pack for both. Yeah, I mean, for the Bills to want to replace either or, and Rap's, Rap's not going to get replaced, um, for the Bills to want to replace DeMar, I, I still think it's got to be a top 30 guy. I, I just don't think they're going to make that deci- that um, 
that that chance to swap one of them out right now uh, for a guy that's similar ish. And then I have to learn the defense. That's a whole argument against Mike Edwards. So that's that's what's challenging to me right now. And then Cole Bishop didn't play great in his 132 snaps, had a few moments in the backups. But really, as uh, in, in his snaps, he hasn't been very good either. Cam Lewis has struggled in stretches in, in his nickel role, nickel dime role that he's played. Really, the best player of all those backups right now has been Ingram has flashed a little bit. But as far as you know, those two go, the Bills could upgrade safety. Per the PFF metrics we just saw on the screen, they're 47th and 48th. I think a top 30 guy needs to come in to replace safety, and I hope the Bills are seriously uh, looking into to seeing if a guy can come in day one and be a difference maker at safety because I think they need it. Otherwise, it's pass rusher or it's one of these plentiful receivers um, that are still on the market that the Bills could, could plug right in, hopefully like Cooper, and be effective like Christian Kirk or Cooper Cup or something along those lines. Uh, I don't. I don't think receivers ever, and I don't think Brandon Bean's done. I think that safety, the end, receiver. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think tonight was a good start. You know, a good baseline, just throwing some names and some teams out there. Because as I alluded to, the key is finding teams who are probably just going to be sellers, right? Like teams with losing records, like the Browns, the Panthers, the Jaguars. I mean, maybe the Jaguars have a little bit of life, but you want to go after teams that you think aren't going anywhere and are just going to try to build for next year. So I guess that being said, if you guys find any potential trade targets, let us know because we'll have a, a full episode next, maybe not full episode, because we'll be talking about the Dolphins. That'll be a, a big show for the Dolphins, but we're definitely going to have to fire up this conversation again next week. So, you know, let us know, come prepared. Let us know if you have any uh, new trade yeah, targets, and maybe some guys that we haven't mentioned yet. On those lines too, the trade down is only 13 days away. Um, right after the Dolphins game before. So it's basically right after the Dolphins into the next Tuesday, the, the November 5th, if there's not enough going on that day. Um, you also have <laughs> uh, the NFL trade deadline. So there's going to be so much going on that, that, that it's just going to be a crazy, crazy week in, in across everything. 